we're excited about having him. It's a mixture of both. I mean, it's still at the end of the day, it's still a game, and we, and we have to have fun doing it. So, um, if we walk around with stress and anxiety and pressure, and you know, we're and we're worried, the players see that, feel that, and will reflect that. So, at the end of the day, it's a game. Um, it's a big business. I understand that. We got to. We need to win, and it's. We go out every week. Every week to work to win, and, and every every Saturday kick it off to win. But you have to enjoy it. If you, if you love you, if you love what you if you love what you do for a living, you're excited to get up in the morning and go do it. If you hate it, you drag your ass to work and go through it. Right. So we uh, we love what we do. I absolutely love it. Uh, being on the grass with the players is second to none, and and watching them have success is is worth it to me. Um, <laughs> the hours. Yeah, we won't get into that part of it. Um, you can't just drop this question on me and expect it like an off the cuff answer. This is like one of those stop. You're supposed to like. You're supposed to like get this to Cam yesterday and give me a day to think about it. So, say it again, because I'm gonna get. I want to give you an answer. Three years here, yeah. Or how about I didn't appreciate or did yeah because if, if I had to say something that I appreciate more about the game now or appreciate in a different way about the game now than I did when I played um, is the journey and the process and taking in the small moments of the process and I talked about this when I retired how I was so singularly focused on something I was never able to achieve when I played um, and sometimes miss the positive great moments during the journey so as I do this now as a coach, still taking that journey to be to be elite and be the best I could be at this profession, it's also going to do it through 85 players or 120 players that are on this grass as well. So enjoying their journey with them and also my journey within theirs, their big picture. Absolutely. I have the ability to smile and appreciate small things, small victories, small improvements in practice, um, you know, praise them. We're not going to celebrate them, but we'll praise them. Uh, we'll appreciate them, and then get ready for the get ready for the next day. I've always wondered. <laughs> I've always wondered with Hall of Fame players, multi talented like you are, can do a lot of things well. Why do you want to take on what some would view as the irritation of having to keep in constant contact with 14, 15, and six year old kids, imploring them to come to your school? Is that burdensome, tiresome for you? Do you enjoy that part of it? You talking about the recruiting part of it? Yes. yes. <laughs> recruiting is is uh it's it's a different side of things, sure, but. This game is all about the players. You cannot outcoach recruiting. So, I mean, when you got really good players, it's a lot easier to be a really good football coach. So, um, I enjoy creating the relationships with them. It's it's interesting, you know. The, the parents remember me playing a lot more than the kids, and the older I get, and these kids start saying they're born like 2012, and I'm like, God, it kills me. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's part of it, and it's you can't you can't win without them. I don't give a damn how good I was. At 12:30 on Saturdays, I'm not allowed to cross the line, and they'll, they'll flag my hind parts too. You know what I mean? So you got to get the guys, and it's um, it's enjoyable creating creating the relationships. It's you know, sure, has the landscape changed? Is it has the methodology of it changed? Sure, but so has the whole world. You got to evolve or or die. Got a chance to just to ask you real quick. Jason got a chance to meet Isaiah today. Very nice young man, raised very well, obviously. Thank you. Uh, process of him transferring here, do, were, were, were you like saying to him, just go wherever makes you happy, I'm not going to lobby you on UM, how, how do you handle that with him? I mean, <laughs> you asked me if I was tampering? <laughs> no, it's perfectly legal. <laughs> <laughs> it's legal as a father to <laughs> No, um, no, it was the, uh, it was, it, you know, it was his process, it was his journey, just like my other son, just like Mason, but, um, you know, when he, when he said that he was, 
you know, there was rumors or rumblings going on in Tucson about, you know, Coach Fish, and he did a good job out there and having a chance to move on. And Isaiah wanted to make a change, and obviously he wants to, he wanted to be at Miami when he came out of high school. Um, so the opportunity to get back here was was huge to him. And people ask you why you do what you do, and I, and I answered a bunch of different ways. But, you know, you look at number 28, that's why I do what I do. I love it. You know, you look at number 86 in Baton Rouge. Um, that's why I do what I do. This is that's why I always say this is somebody else's son. So whether when Isaiah wasn't here, Mason wasn't here, you know, Reuben Bain and everybody else in that room, Marquise Lightfoot and all those other guys, Cole McConaughey, those were somebody else's sons too, and I enjoy every bit of it. When it comes to recruiting, what are you kind of looking for in a as far as mentally, um, like what kind of person are you looking for? It's a tough question too. I mean, it's it. I guess it varies by by position, but some of the things that you want everybody to have, obviously, you want them to have to be competitive, highly competitive, highly motivated, um, chasing the right thing for the right reason, keeping the main thing the main thing at all times, and it's and that gets cloudy with young kids sometimes because the recruiting is is interesting to say the least. Um, you know, outside of measurables, you want a kid that loves ball. You know, it, it's it's um, you know, who's your favorite college football team? Who's your favorite NFL team? You know, some kids don't have one. I just, it's just, it, it was, it's strange to me. Um, who's your favorite NBA basketball team? Some people don't have one. It's just, it's different. You know, the, the world is different. And I get that. You want, I want a guy that loves to do what we do because it's not easy. It's not easy. And then, uh, you, you, I look for kids that have joy in playing the game. You know, you watch Ruben Bain play in high school. You watch Cole McConaughey play in high school. Armando Blunt. Um, you know, Marquise Lightfoot up in Chicago watching his game film. You, you see the joy and the love of the game. And it, I think it's expressed through the energy they play with. Um, you know, the, the celebration when plays are over, um, the celebration, celebrating with teammates. Um, even a guy like Simeon Barrow, we, we watched him play last year at Michigan State and the way he bounced around the field, it was in the huddle. You know, and I don't, we don't just, I don't just watch snap the whistle. I like to watch, you know, pre-snap and then post-whistle as well and just see how guys carry themselves. Um, how are they after, after adversity? How do they handle adversity? How are they after losses? You know, how do they how do they react to wins? And you know, going forward next week, how do they work? You know, that's all things you got to figure out through talk with parents, coaches, friends, mentors, administrators, principals. It's a lot. And just lastly, for me, uh, just the depth on, on this defensive line. Um, how excited are you to have as much depth as you have, and just the flexibility to rotate guys in and out. It's, uh, it's great to have a deep room, uh, July 30th. We need to have a deep room August 31st and all the way through the holidays, past Christmas and all that. So it's, um, you know, again, it's about the players. And our job is to get them prepared, try to keep them as healthy as we can. We need a tough, strong, physical football team that has a nasty disposition and, uh, and are ready to go on Saturday and impose their will on people. But, if we can do that in a way we keep everybody healthy and be ready to go, then I like I like where we're at. Forced. Played a lot more probably than anybody expected. Talk about what comes out to the He's um he's got a lot of things that you need to be an elite, elite player, and he works at it. And I was saying earlier, he he he's in love with the process of being great. A lot of people want to be great. They they say they want to be great. They want to be on that wall. They want to be in a Pro Football Hall of Fame. They want to be in the NFL first round pick. Whatever it is, but are you really willing to do what it takes to get to that? And and a lot of kids aren't. You know, a lot of kids aren't or don't know that they're not. You know, because their their maturity levels are different places. Bain is a very mature guy, mature kid that works really hard at football, wants to be great at football, is thirsty and hungry for information. Um, you know, I had to come down here and do this stuff and he wanted to, he was trying to drag me in the media room to, to watch film. It's just all day, every day. All day, every day. And, and it's, it's really cool to see success is based on his work, his work, his effort, his work ethic. Um, you know, he, we find things every week on every player. 
obviously, and, and you know he ships away at working those moves, working the, the whether it be the entry angle, the pad level, what hand he has to lead with, depending on who we're playing. And um, he made a really, really, really huge play last year in overtime, based on something we, we spent five days working on during the week, and then to see the joy in his face and and, and that and that further elevate his game is just it's great to see.